The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing, Nico? Good. Right. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 6648 Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm Paige Clark. That's a beautiful morning. 54 degrees in downtown St. Petersburg, going up to 73. So we're into winter mode. And yeah, I, it's nice. I really got to like pull it. out a sweater. Keep the house open. It's mm -hmm. just a blessing. It's uh, kind of the opposite here of what uh, we used to have up north where we always bless the summers and now we bless the winters. But for sure, good. for sure. Like Make sure you subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. We've got a new one out. Yeah, this is really an important one, too, because it really talks about the uh, longevity genes and how to activate the longevity genes. We know that exercise does that, and, of course, diet does it, too. But also mm -hmm. the spaces between the meals are the most important thing. You can find all that information in the, this uh, issue of the uh, Health Signals newsletter. And remind you to please pick up our Primal Edge, our One Shot Wonder, over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients so it's easy to take. It's all powered by our miracle molecules called fulvic and humic acid. And that helps us get the good stuff in the cells and, and the bad stuff, stuff out. out. For sure. Mm -hmm. So today I want to talk about the future of food. And I uh, found this article, the, the Writings on the Wall, The Coming Collapse of the Industrial Livestock Industry. And the bullet p points on this are we're just a few years away from the tipping point in engineered food. That's We've right. Certainly seen a Basically, rise of that. they're saying traditional agriculture's 10,000 year run is nearly over. Yeah, and it's really not 10,000 years. In most places, I think it's maybe 5,000 years or 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly, we've been on the agricultural kick, and it's something that saved our lives. So, no wonder these foods become important but I think a little bit too important when we make them our staples. Well, here's the media push. Better foods, tastier mm -hmm. foods, and cheaper foods are on the way. Yeah, so from uh, <laughs> 2012 to 223, Crazy. the cost of proteins in the U.S. from cows versus the precision biological food technology where we reach parity, says the independent think tank Rethink X, will be a tipping point after which the acceptance of modern foods will quickly accelerate quickly, leaving the cattle industry virtually bankrupt by 2030, and five years later, down to 10% of its current size. And before we go on, Nico, let's yep. kind of give a little back backtracking here. Really, what we see is a push of industry to get us to accept these Frankenfoods mm -hmm. that we have to, and that we're going to want to because they're going to be tastier and cheaper. Well, this is about control of populations. When we talk about exactly. food, it's always the food that controls the population. And this is why agriculture was such a boom, because now we can control people a lot easier when we lock up certain foods for a mm -hmm. while. And then kind of the, the, the government wants to be your cook, in a sense. You know, the, these religious organizations and these political organizations always want to control you because they need something from us. They need mm -hmm. part of our lives. Right. They need us to be involved with them in a monetary situation and also helping them. And it's a good concept from the get-go because if we're in a tribal situation, the medicine man really were the ones that we went to to have spiritual healing as well. And if we got a cold or something, we went to him. And mm -hmm. he's the one that cured us. But he's became important only for that, not for controlling us. Right. So Very this true. is a, this is definitely with agriculture a big shift and now when they're talking about these Franken foods that you and I uh, refer, name to them, refer to fondly. is uh, you yep. know this is really, really well I, I think of it when there's an emergency, if they know you're hoarding food, they know you have a supply of food that you've put away because you're smart they're going to want to take it because they're the ones that control the food. Mm -hmm. These local governments or the national government or any government or church will try to do this. Well, come on, you know, be part of the community. While well, you're the smart one, you know, looking ahead and saying, I see something coming, I better prepare myself. But no, they want, to, they want the state to be in control of it. Right, right, for sure. I see it coming, I sure do. That's what we're saying here, guys. 
we're not for this. We're, we're alerting you to kind of what the real play is on some of these discussions about changing food is also the weather's changing and there's going to be crop shortages. Well, there already everything. is. There's yeah. no doubt. I mean, the writing is on the wall. But there's two kind of camps in this. One is the kind of these large corporations and the government working kind of in unison. Mm -hmm. And the other camp is these the free people, the paleo people, the people who are actually doing research in ketones, the people uh, like uh, Sinclair who are putting the inf information out there. Yeah, they're making money, but they're essentially saying on the Internet, this is free stuff. You know, go look it up and you can really decide for yourself what you want to do. And this is the freedom that we still have in this country, although there is a big suppression by the people in charge, the big companies who press the government to do their bidding for them to quiet those folks. Yeah, I see it happening. Notice this topic here, building better food. Mm -hmm. Again, it's getting us to think that we need something better than what nature provides. Yeah, and it's always run by these or big corporations that right. have these predictions, and they're going to predict that things are bad, so you better listen to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they say that microorganisms are at the heart of the upcoming disruption, as they were when humanity began domesticating plants and animals 10,000 years ago. Yes, and yeah. this is an important date because we know that the Younger Dryas was around 10,000 years ago. We were just coming out of an ice age. Food was probably scarce, but probably human beings were scarce too because we just came through a huge, huge calamity of a couple of thousand years mm -hmm. where we probably had to live underground or under real dire straits. Now we're coming out of the Stone Age again, perhaps, mm -hmm. and we're starting to find food and there's still a lot, a lot of large animals around, so it's bountiful. But as the population grows, then, of course, problems begin. Well, what I said about microorganisms, it was really about that time that we realized we could ferment food and That's preserve right. it. Yes. So they were important to that. But these things have basically stood for thousands of years, harvesting the nutrients on which we depend, the time and cost intensive of breeding, mm -hmm. okay, extracting, and consuming the macroorganisms in which these microorganisms reside. Yeah. Well, it's important what it says there. Within a thousand years, we were controlling microorganisms through fermentation. Uh -huh. Already, there were times when the major crop, which is our animals, were probably weren't around or maybe they shifted migration. So now we had to find different ways. So if you're hunting and you come back empty, you start looking for goopers and you start looking for roots and you start mm -hmm. looking for berries and things like that, whatever is there. And through that system, we discovered that a lot of these things don't quite gel with us too much, so we have to change them. So we found out through fermentation, uh, making bread and letting them sour, making cheeses and alcohol, and preserving our fruits and vegetables uh, where they become healthier through the preservations. Huge, mm -hmm. huge thing that we discovered. So now we're trying to rediscover that in a sense. I think the scientists probably have a good heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But, but, well. It's, what they say is it's really the microorganisms that we're after. Right. They're the specific source of the nutrients we seek today because yeah. they're the ones that make it. Right, and that's different than we used to because before we were talking about the large molecules, the, the animals themselves, the macronutrients instead of the micronutrients. So now because of science, we can do that. So we'll go on after the break. Yeah, we'll talk about the future of food as of what, and the many impacts of this coming disruption. And so. pick up your primal edge while you're there and so remain healthy throughout the show. Stay tuned. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. talking about the future of food and moving food production to the molecular level promises a more efficient means of feeding ourselves and the delivery of superior cleaner nutrients without the unhealthy chemical antibiotic uh, insecticide uh, that additives, uh, additives that are required by the industrial uh, you know the, that what today's, we're doing today today's yeah. food today's food well that makes it sound good yeah it all you know and parts of it I think are each ingredient will serve a specific purpose allowing us to create foods with the exact attributions uh, attributes. attributes attributes that we uh, desire and you know I don't even know if we knew to know on a molecular level how much of each part we need we have a theory about it uh, that's why well, I've always kind of followed the whole food concept there, well, there's yeah. cofactors and reasons there's reasons why a uh, ribeye tastes the way it does and does things to us that mm -hmm. we like. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether this future food does that, uh, I don't know. Are we that smart? Even better, the report predicts that future food will be more nutritious, tastier, and more convenient with most greater variety. Hey, Rethink X coins the term, and they call it food as software. Yeah. Information. Yeah, it food consists of databases of engineered molecules, molecular cookbooks, if you will that allow for to decentralize, stable, and resilient production everywhere. Fermentation farms, even in densely populated areas. Oh, there you go. What we said earlier, that yeah. the microbe is really what we're after. Yes. I mean, I learned that from Dr. Marshall. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of his B vitamins are all real fermented. Right. In other words, letting the bugs, the microbes, mm -hmm. make the nutrient. Yeah, and no, of course that's what we have animals for too. They they eat the things and convert it for us, so it's all through their to eat. Fer yeah through exactly. fermentation exactly. Of course, food isn't the only thing, and they mention uh, pharmaceuticals, of course. And so, what are some of the impacts like? of this coming disruption in our food, economic ones? Big one. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, future foods uh, and products will be at least fifty percent or as much as eighty percent lower as current products. Well, that sounds interesting. Well, of course, the average U.S. family will uh, will save about twelve hundred dollars a year, adding up to a hundred billion dollars a year by the uh, for the nation by twenty thirty. Uh, the other thing is the revenues of the U.S. beef and dairy industry and their suppliers will decline by at least fifty percent by twenty thirty. See, I think this is also a push uh, of that uh, doing away with these types of food. You know, the gonna... other livestock and fishery industries will follow. Well, again, doing away with them. Why? Because are they really bad, yeah. or is it because they're going to go away because of the weather? Yeah. You're not going to be able to support them. Well, I'm them. thinking the grand solar minimums coming. Right. We already see the impacts this year. 
next year probably worse if what we're thinking is happening. And mm -hmm. I am watching podcasts from farmers up in the Dakotas and up in Canada. They're all saying the same thing. My crops are down. And, and what happens in the industry, too, because I was listening to a guy who does trading, and he says the first thing you'll see in this is a glutton because okay. they're bringing the animals earlier to slaughter because mm. they're not growing as much. Right. Or, or you'll do, be doing the harvesting of certain crops sooner because there's no time. We know the weather's turning bad, so you have to get these crops out early. So you so see a lot be, of food. You see a lot of food, less nutritious, because they're not up they to snuff. Get, they didn't get to their bricks level. Right. right, so we're getting a glutton of stuff in, and I see that happening. I, a lot of times I go to Earth Fair, and there's nothing there. Then I go back the next day, there's nothing there, and I ask the guy, when's the shipping coming in? He says, well, we've gone from twice a week to once a week, so now we're getting it Friday night and Saturday morning, and sure enough, Saturday morning I went out there, Bought like eight ribeyes for mm -hmm. discounted price, which is great. So there's things that's happening is great, but when you see that the food is not there in midweek, mm -hmm. that makes me think that already there's something yeah. going on. Yeah, either that or something's going on with Earth there. Well, yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, because I did go to another store and they had a bunch. So right, there you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, the volume of cattle feed uh, crops required in the U.S. will fall by 50% by 2030. Yeah, farm uh, land values will collapse uh, by 40 to 80 percent. Yeah, and uh, countries heavily invested in animal, animal products will have significant, significant economic shocks. Yeah, so this is also scare tactics to me. These are uh, yeah, organizations that, pe that people turn to to say what's going to be happening. Well, exactly. This is like the the Trilateral Commission had yeah, their meeting in a sense. and decided to put out the message. Yeah. And then they pay these think tank and science So observer. if you're in a country that, uh, like Argentina, lots of beef going around, you're reading this, you say, well, maybe I better get out of the beef business. Yeah, an because... example would be Brazil, where 21% of GDP is derived from such industries. Right. In other words, get out of the meat industry. Don't have a farm. Don't sprawl. Move into the Hunger Games cities, right? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so environmental impact also by 2035, 60% of the area currently allotted for uh, livestock and food production will be freed for other unit uses. Yeah, like lots of snow. <laughs> That's what I see. <laughs> freed yeah. for other uses, yeah. Snowboarding maybe. Uh, there is enough land uh, if it is, we're dedicated to planting trees for carbon, blah, blah, blah. And they're talking about, oh, how great this will be on the greenhouse gas from farting cows. Yeah, and if you just let the cows in the field, they won't be farting. Because they're, <laughs> because they're, they're, eating, eating, they're, not, they're eating grass what they're supposed to do instead, instead of grains. Instead of corn, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a bunch of crap for sure. So water consumption related to uh, cattle will drop by 50% by 2030, by 75% in five more years. And modern for, uh, food production will lower water use from the animal agriculture by 35%. So they've got all these great numbers here. Nobody right. knows if it's true or not. But let's see what the social impact is. Okay. How does it affect us? More nutritious, cheaper, higher quality food will become widely available. Access to cheap protein, particularly in the developing world, will have a hugely positive impact on hunger, nutrition, and general health. And of course, we all know what they send when they're starving. What kind of cheap protein are they talking about, though? Wheat hmm? and soy and mm -hmm. sorghum and mm -hmm. barley. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. And rice, of course. So in the declining industries, if you're part of those things that are being pushed out, about 600,000 jobs will be lost by 2030, leading up to over a million in 2035. This sounds kind of like a Green New Deal push. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. The new industries will add back about 700,000 jobs. Oh, so... It's a net gain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Geopolitical uh, ramifications. Uh, decentralizing food production will cause relations between countries to shift as it will be less affected by climate. And, you know, I do notice a lot of people, a lot of companies now are doing indoors. Mm -hmm. They see the writing on the wall. I think right. that's probably a good thing. Getting warehouse space. Yeah. All that we have to do now is think of the animals and how we're going to do the meat production with the wild animals, maybe mm -hmm. uh, at different latitudes, maybe underground, maybe... I don't know. So basically what they're saying is without the requirement of arable land for, as a prerequisite mm -hmm. for food production, even smaller or densely populated areas will have an opportunity to become major food sources. Yeah. Well, I think uh, on an individual level, small cities and towns and your farmers and everything, we get together and we make a plan for our area. That's the way I think it can be successful. Having large companies all over the United States transporting food doesn't seem to me economically 
feasible, uh, especially during bad times. So I think the more we start growing things ourselves, the better it's going to be. So well, it kind of ends in, you know, it's a fascinating look forward. <laughs> yes. You know, it, again, I see, I see the play. Yeah. I see them. I am agreeing. With you know, 100%. yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. So I want to come back. The future of food, we'll talk about what we're going to eat in uh, about 10 years. Mm. So let's see what the plans they got for us, and uh, we'll go from there. So during the break, please... And there's actually uh, a movie coming out about yeah, we'll have I, to tell I got them. that too, yeah. Yeah, sure. uh, And please pick up our Health Signals news newsletter, folks, and please pick up our Primal Edge. Primal Edge is really important when we're talking about the Grand Solar Minimum, where nutritious is, is out of our food, but it's still here in the Primal Edge. So pick that up, please. Right. We'll be right back. Right back. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of performance training since 1998 Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically as a certified personal trainer Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions the performance training studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Nico and I are talking about the future of food. And guess what? What will we be eating in 2028? Well, we've been talking, Nico and I were discussing during the break, that uh, there's powerful forces that decide where they're taking society. And then it trickles down into research. And we see this over and over again, uh, this drive to tell us that we're damaging the planet and we don't have enough food and we're going to have to go to manufactured food. Well, there's a lot of people that are going to make a lot of money off of that. 
Right. And not only that, it's, the, it's these foods that come along that we're surprised at and we like. How about these uh, ones behind us, Franken foods? <laughs> yeah, well, in 1928, and no one ever tasted bubblegum before. And we got bubblegum and we go, wow, modern society, so cool. 1930s frozen ice cream dessert. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first tasted one in the 50s, I think, we came to Canada. And they had, just down the road, there was this little dairy freeze. And that's the first time we tasted soft How ice cream. How about popping candy? Remember those? Yeah, you that, thought yeah. that was the coolest <laughs> thing? Evanescence in your mouth, yeah. Red Bull uh, showcased this uh, a strange medicinal flavor that's uh, become uh, synonymous with energy drinks. That's and so it's true. Food. The food we're eating is evolving. It's changing. And there's, it's fun to get some. Yeah, but I, I always go back uh, into the woods and say, mm -hmm. okay, we're around the campfire, and uh, we went out and we hunted something. And are we around the campfire and saying, man, did you notice our food is really changing? It's, <laughs> right. No, it's not. Someone's it's pulling. Good. Could you imagine sitting by the campfire, you've had a day of hunting, and all of a sudden someone says, you want some Pop Rocks? Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> this is what's happening today. So yeah. food hasn't changed. We changed it because the weather changed, because we were short of food. We started saying, well, we can eat this too and survive. And s slowly it becomes a staple. But hey, guys, by 2028, you can expect to be tucking into foods unlike anything you've experienced before. Okay, this link between di uh, diet and health was first proved in the mid-1980s uh, or 1800s by the Scottish naval surgeon, Dr. Lind, who cre was credited with uh, really solving the problem with scurvy. Well, well, and actually, the fact that they, um, this was the correlation between eating and keeping our bodies healthy. Right. And his study demonstrated that citrus fruits could protect sailors from scurvy. Yeah. And this watershed finding set the stage for lemons and limes to be issued as standard I, fare for And probably for soldiers. what they weren't doing is eating any Sailors. raw beef or anything like that, which is loaded with vitamin C until you cook it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Here you're on a boat and you can eat the raw fish, which has the vitamin C in it. When you cook it, the vitamin C leaves. And certainly they had pigs aboard and things like that they could slaughter. Mm -hmm. So the vitamin C was available. They just didn't know that it was there. Well, and that's a good point. Um, you know, if you were living in Siberia or whatever, you couldn't pick a citrus fruit no. off so of a tree. So how old were you getting the vitamin You were getting C? it from the raw meat. Yeah, from yeah. the raw blubber and mm -hmm. the seals and things like that. So the, the humans always found a way until they were brought up a certain way to think differently. And that's what the these uh, companies and the governments are trying to do, make us think differently, thinking, you know, here's the future of food. Here's what you got to look forward to. And look at on our telestrator. Exactly. I mean, is this the future of food that you want? Uh, not at all. I and, don't you know, even know what it is. And, and really, this kind of brings it up. I called it Frankenfood, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, these days, science may have dissected almost every element of our diet. And you always have people telling, we're telling people a certain way to eat. Yeah. Other people are telling them other things. And it gets to a point where you almost have to say, you know what? I'm tired of telling you what to do. Use your yourself. own discernment. Yeah. yeah, listen to your own body. And... Um, there was a team in 2015, a team of scientists from Israel tracked the blood sugar levels in the blood of 800 people over several days, and they made a dis surprising discovery that individuals' biological response to identical foods vary widely. Yeah. And that's people, why some people thrive on one kind of food. And yeah, some people have don't. ice cream and they spike their sugar, and other people don't, and other people just have a little white rice and it spike their sugar. Right. It all has to do with what's inside your body. To, uh, accept these things. The microbes have to be there. Well, in the next 10 years, they say the emerging field of personalized nutrition mm -hmm. um, will offer healthy eating guidance tailored to the individual. I see this becoming even more controlled by the government mm -hmm. as those of us that have been health coaches are pressured that if we're pushing real food, the, well, I the dietitians, the, I think, are going to be more a part of this designer food. I see the designer danger food. in the government controlling our food because whatever they can put into the food to make us feel a certain way is there today. Mm -hmm. We know that on bland foods, and Dr. Kellogg studied this, on bland foods, you're much more reluctant to say, hey, you're doing it wrong. Right. You know, you're much more compliant on these silly foods that we call cereals and breads and things like that. Well, you know, it says in the next 10 years, but it's really already here, the emerging mm -hmm. field of personalized nutrition includes genetic testing. We call this nutrigenic services. Right. And uh, they're already testing your DNA and often dietary advice. Oh, you have this snip, you have this snip, you know, you'll do better with this kind of food or that kind of food. And um, 
But that advice can be hit or miss, and by 2028, we will understand much more about genetics. Well, we have a lot of things that are dormant in our body. If you look at them and you have them in there, you might think, well, this is something that's going to be a problem, but it may never show up. Well, I like to alive. say your genes are the blueprint. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that the contractor follows it exactly. That's right. You, know, you and, might and, pick a different board. You know, if you take that statement with some people, with rice sets, sets off your blood sugar, and some people it's ice cream, it really, it's not the people so much as what they ate the last 20 years. Well, it's really the light cycle. I'm going to yeah. come back to the circadian rhythm well, and light yeah. cycles yeah. And, and inappropriateness of eating the food in the inappropriate environment. How, there are millions of people that are thriving on rice, mm -hmm. despite the fact that we sure. know it primarily was designed as a mass food, um, somehow or another, you, you look at the people in other countries that have very simple diets and maybe not as much access. And I notice, like, for example, the good dentition, the good jaws. And the um, other thing that comes to mind is what else aren't they doing? Right. Yeah, you know, it's not what... It's, yeah, the, it's the whole society thing in that area. It works very well, but if you take them out and put them into America, those same people eating the same thing may not do so well. Mm -hmm. So it could be lots of other factors that are involved in that besides just the food itself. I think the food plays a big part. But, mm -hmm. it's, it's... but they're saying in 2028 we'll have food that has been engineered to be more nutritious. <laughs> And, but um, then, then that, you know, you're talking about experimentation. We still do not know really how the whole system works. We don't know how these micronutrients, uh, micro and who knows, is there another micro underneath that that's even smaller that we don't know yet and how it affects us? So if we put all these things from different types of animals into our plants or from a different plant to another plant, there's no way we know what's going to happen. Right. We don't know that with even, I was listening last night to a podcast about a guy who's uh, doing uh, genetic things with his cows. So getting sperm and trying to get the Cadillac, you know. And uh, remember, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago where everybody in the, in the United States is using one or two different cows. Right. So he's being, all, all the cows and, are and he heard about that and he says, I'm being very selective. I'm not going to that top tier. I'm going down to the other tier. But it tells you exactly what they've been eating and what their propensity is and all those things. And I'm saying you can't know all of it. Yeah. They give you a clue. But what's wrong with a happy bull going into the pasture instead of... Oh, this Why does it have to be so complicated? Yeah. Well, let's go well, back. We're, we're trying to make it easier for, well, for the farmer. Well, they think so, but maybe it's not. The fruit and vegetables that we enjoy today have been selectively bred, like you said, mm -hmm. over thousands of years, uh, often mutating out of uh, that are not even recognized from the original wild crop. Like you always said... Real apple with a little crab apple. Yeah. We're going to continue this. We're going to take a short break. Pick up the primal edge so you can get ancient nutrition into your body today. We're right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And hey, welcome back. So the natural is a buzz term food marketers love to use, but yep. barely any of our current produce ever existed in the natural world. The fruit and vegetables we enjoy today have been selectively bred over thousands of years. Like often, the carrot? Yeah, often mutated out of recognition from the original wild crop. Carrot is one example. They were an original. They used to be orange. little scrawny little white yeah. things. Yeah. Peaches were the size of cherries. Watermelons were small, round, hard, and bitter. So most of the food you're buying in a grocery store is not actually the natural wild version. It's been engineered and for marketing purposes. Well, also for palatability. Uh, yeah, palatability. We, we didn't like them before. You know, they were they were probably nutritious and probably spurred something in us. Yeah, like, because they were tart and bitter. That's right. So mm -hmm. if you ate a crab apple in the fall, I remember doing that. And I used to love to eat crab uh, apples. I did but, too. But I, that was really the real apple. Yeah, my teeth used to turn squeaky. You know, uh -huh. I remember that. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, it's uh, today definitely everything has changed. So I've often seen all these vegetables. Uh, most of them come from the mustard seed plant. Uh -huh. uh, the fruits are not natural fruits anymore. They're much much higher in any of the sugars that we used to have. That's the way we made them because that's the way our tastes go. If we have something sweet, we go, "Ooh, I like this." But really, what's happened with this? Breeding for taste mm -hmm. and palatability mm -hmm. has been a, uh, a pretty much a boom or a bust for bust for nutrition. For us. Bust a for bust nutrition. for us for nutrition. Protein, calcium, phosphorus, iron, riboflavin, and vitamin C have all waned in fruit and vegetables over the last century. Yeah, just last year, researchers from Australia showcased a banana with high levels of pro vitamin A, an important. Yeah, we're probably yeah, getting too much A anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you probably don't even find that. I sent you that article about yeah. the guy. Yeah, that's kind of a whole interesting rabbit hole. Yeah. So to create this fruit, the researchers snipped out genes from a type of New Guinea banana, naturally high in A, and inserted them into the common banana variety. Yeah. Um, Corn has definitely given a boost of uh, methylnion. Methionine, Met which is a B vitamin, a, a key vitamin. nutrient missing in By the cereal. By splicing the DNA from a bacterium. Even the genetic code itself can be edited to support superpowers. In 2008, for example, researchers modified carrots that increased the body's absorption of ca calcium. And when we do these things, it sounds really good, but I'm just wondering if down the line, maybe the calcium in the carrot might not be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe there's a reason that the creator made certain things to go with certain things. Yep. And that's where we bring into the idea of cofactors. Right. Or... Um, uh, partner nutrients that actually help the other nutrients do what they do. Yeah. 
Yeah. Agreed. Precise DNA editing technology, which is a technique called CRISPR, CRISPR. Oh, I now see. allows mm -hmm. the alteration of plants' genetic code with uh, unpredicted or unprecedented accuracy. Me, accuracy. So get ready for tasty apples, all the goodness, and, and blah, blah, blah. They have all so. the goodness of their bitter forebears, uh, peanuts that don't give you allergies. Sounds interesting, guys, but first of all, anything we hear about on genes and creation of things, they're making it sound like they're just getting around to it, but they've been doing this stuff for yeah. 50 years. Well, it's interesting what's happening in our house. You know that we've been on the carnivore pretty much uh, mm -hmm. full, but holidays come around, and we, uh, you know, try to get a little other foods in there, and right. uh, we usually buy some cashews or some nuts or things like that. So we bought some pistachios, and, uh, you know, we haven't had them for a while, and both Ellen and I noticed the difference in our bodies right away. Really? The next morning, yeah, the stool is completely loose instead of the nice hmm. firm thing that we have. And it's just because we haven't been eating it, and now all of a sudden, you know, you sit in front of the TV or you're reading something, you're eating mm -hmm. a bunch of them, not just a little handful. If you eat the eight in the hand, that what? probably is not going to be a problem, but then when you go full, you know, bore, and that's what will happen during the holidays. A lot of people will get sick because they're eating different food. Yeah. So it says really in 2028, there's going to be flavors you've never tasted before. And Silicon Valley, well, of course, they're involved in all this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they, they're known for attracting the brightest minds, and they're becoming really involved in the global hub for food innovation. And a startup currently making waves is called Impossible Foods, which has created a meat-free burger. Yeah. We uh, talked about that on our show. It sizzles in the pan, tastes like meat, and bleeds. Of course, it bleeds because the secret ingredient is hem, the oxygen-carrying molecule that makes both meat and blood red. Hem mm -hmm. is kind of a part of an iron molecule, I think, mm -hmm. isn't it? Uh, so they're putting that in it to make it look like it. But uh, I was watching a guy uh, the other day. Uh, he went out and bought an uh, Impossible Burger and a real burger, and he just couldn't. <laughs> he says when he bit into the Impossible Burger, it was like a little rubber. It wouldn't break apart. It was just hard to It just kind of grosses choose. me out. I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. it does I mean, too. it does. So, I mean, it doesn't another stop one. there. Another startup is pioneering animal-free milk yeah. and egg whites. It's expected to get used to the new taste of meat-free and dairy-free free food. Yeah, there's other competitors like Beyond Meat and Moving Mountains cooking up similar burgers, and plans are afoot for plant-based steaks and chicken. Mm -hmm. I don't see why they can call this meat. They still do. Uh, they call it fake meat, maybe, but I don't know. Uh, you know, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So. Yeah, um, I feel like um, what we see is just can a way to take real food created by in the world and take it away from us and, and get us to eat. I think substitutes that might have some designer nutrition, but. Well, you know, where they're going to be successful if they make something like this that's really, really, really tastes good and we really desire it, desire it almost like a drug, then people, kind of like the Soylent Green story, people want this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know what it is, but they want it. And we feel nice and safe and secure because this company is giving it to us. In fact, they may give us a monthly allotments of this and guarantee that I mean, we're going to have this stuff. There's no guarantee on the beef. No guarantee in your vegetables, but your Impossible Burger is going to arrive on time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, go. this is the future I see. Oh, yeah, the emerging field of neurogastronomy, the brain and the gut connection to get, you know, of food science brings together the latest understandings of neurology and food, and it will be a big player in 2028 dining. So guess what might be happening well, when you go out eight years from now? You'll be, you, you, you might be... Not just hearing music in the background, but in the restaurant of 2028, there may be aromatic mists. Uh huh. Controlling the hungry. lighting. Mm hmm. Well, get this: if you, in about a few years, you're going to see novelties like edible spray paint, algae, uh, algae protein snack bars, beer made with wastewater, even lollipops designed to cure hiccups. We don't know exactly what will be tomorrow's. Yes, why would anyone want to drink a beer that's made from wastewater? But they're going to make you think that you're saving the planet. I suppose. You're, you're, you know, you're saving the planet. Well, we're really, we're really. How about, about ice cream and mm. chocolate that, that don't melt in warm weather? How can that be good for you? Yeah, I mean. It's not going to melt in your stomach either, apparently. See, I don't how, know. see what they're doing with a lot of people. I mean, you and I both care about the environment. We mm -hmm. care deeply. Sure. But some people would feel that we don't because of our 
preference for I think we do it more food. because we understand the process of a cow mm -hmm. pooping on the grass and fertilizing it and the grass growing and oh, the cow it, eating it. It's it a really, natural you're system. You're talking about poop a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I am, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, today what you see is, uh, and I see it with a lot of young people, they're coming up and they're feeling guilty. Well, we got to do this because we have to protect from, yeah. you know, uh, greenhouse house gassing. And I think... All of this is a mentality that's steering people towards this kind of food. As somebody can make a lot of money. Yeah, it ain't right. going to be us. <laughs> <That's for sure. laughs> Stick around, folks. We've got a little bit more. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back. On the Telestrator, I've got the future of food. You can uh, Google this. It's going to be in the next uh, Health Signals newsletter. This is a trailer for the movie, and you can watch the movie, too. Uh, you probably have to pay for it, though. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just wanted to bring that to light. It's and really the last thing we're going to talk about is the seven new foods on the market. And this is just kind of an indication. It's nothing really outstanding. But... Well, I'll tell you what this is, Nico. Okay. Um, this was uh, from this year's Food and Nutrition Conference okay. Expo that took mm -hmm. place in Nashville. Nashville. And that's where all the registered dietitians who are, tr are truly the ones that have given the credit as being the ones in some places only allowed to give up nutrition advice. Right. And unfortunately, they're... they're profession is very heavily influenced by the food industry yeah. and the drug industry. Yeah. So they are really heavily 
um, invested. invested and encouraged to recommend new foods. Some of them may be healthy, some maybe not so much. Let's talk about a few of them. Yeah, well, they're certainly not complete foods, but the... the, the well, the Nevichas natural coconut hemp pepichas are basically pumpkin seeds yeah. that are um, have the flavor of coconut and hemp. So they're playing off the fact that people hear these words, yeah. and um, there they are. Well, these are some uh, cold-pressed juices. These mm -hmm. juices, uh, Bot House, Bolt House is uh, doing them in their tw uh, 19... Release this 1915, 1915 organic cold pressed juices. Yeah. And they're hot right now. They say they're five flavors and they're high pressure pasteurized. Yeah. But they're probably filled with uh, carbs. Um, they're basically giving you your fruits and vegetables. But again, are they necessary? Or if you're going to have them, have them right when you do it. Yeah. Blue uh, diamond, which are good almonds. Now they've uh, got spirulina in them. Right. Spir spiritia. They call no, it. that's sriracha. Is the sriracha? <laughs> <laughs> sriracha is a oh, is a hot a is thing. a hot spice. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. So okay, they're, so they're, they're giving you okay. spicy almonds. Little do I know. Mm -hmm. The graham crackers, of course. Now they're going to have a little honey on them, I guess. And gluten free. Mm -hmm. I always ask the question: If it's gluten free, what's holding it together? Some right. other kind of glue. Right. Yes, right. Exactly. exactly. So. And then monk fruit in the bar. Monk fruit is a different sweetener. It's made from a different fruit. Yeah, but, it's still sweet. Folks. If you want to know the future of food, it's going to be something exciting to watch. Go out to the pasture and see the real future. There you go. We'll be right back. I mean, no, we're gone. We'll be back next week. See ya. See you later. Bye-bye.